carry on with our, our thinking. And it's amazing to me how much this has changed me again because I, I teach a lot about our mind and how we think and how we need to adjust it and change thinking. And, and uh, you know, this would probably, I guess, would be part two of We Are Who We Thought. Sunday morning we dealt with a thought on, uh, uh, you know, who we are in Christ. I am, you know, a revelation receiver, blessed to be a blessing. I believe people caught hold of that. Uh, but Proverbs 23, 7 says that the man thinks in his heart, so is he. We started uh, uh, last week with thinking about the big picture of thinking, seeing the world beyond our own needs and how that leads to great ideas. You've got to think bigger than what you've been thinking. You know, uh, focus thinking, removing mental clutter and distractions to realize your full potential. Yeah, there's so many things trying to clutter your life right now. It tries to crowd in. And you, the, you can't get caught up with the, with the trivial Amen. If you want to be, make a, uh, an impact on this world, uh, creative thinking, stepping out of the boat, making breakthroughs, and shared thinking, working with others to compound results. You and I are together. We think better. And we talk about the power of an idea. The battle for control and leadership of the world has always been waged most effectively at the idea level. I think it was last week, week before, I said uh, it, was a, it was Adolf Hitler that said, it is, uh, it's great for leaders that men do not think. You know, and that's what happened. People quit thinking. They let other people think for them. And therefore, you had the, the Holocaust and that which happened there. So again, the battle for control and leadership of the world has often been waged most effectively at the idea, letter, idea level. An idea, rather right or wrong, that captures the mind of our nation's youth will soon work its way into every area of society. And ideas determine consequences. Ideas determine consequences. Ideas determine consequences. When our youth start thinking of things, and see, we're at a certain age, many of us, and, and what we think does matter. But our, our kids are going to come up, and they're going to start fa fashioning what we know as the United States of America. And as you already know, we have been making a downturn. This thing has not been going good. And, and the only thing, you know, for, for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. And if you don't learn to, learn to stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And so it's important to uh, start. And, and the problem is in being a believer in Christ. And by the way, it's not hard being a believer. All you got to do is believe. You just got to believe in Christ. Uh, my heart is, is that one day we'll work our way toward being Christian and that we'll be more like Christ. But right now we are believers being discipled to be like Christ. And believers, it's, it's, so it's not a hard. Matter of fact, can I tell you something? When you want to win somebody to Jesus, quit trying to make them a Christian. Just make them a believer. Because that's what the Bible teaches. Amen. When you become a believer in Christ Jesus, then your life starts changing. And you're heading toward. It's a process. And everything we're doing is heading toward this process. But I, I'm really bothered by what I'm seeing in the news. And, what I, and, and I know some of us, we're just afraid to say anything. And, I've, uh, and again, you know, those of you that know me know that I'm going to get on a tractor or a lawnmower. And then I get to thinking. So today I'm out there and I'm thinking. And I saw this come up. And you can't avoid it because it's in your face. You're going to throw it at you. The Bruce Jenner issue. And it bothers me because of how many people who I know to be, what I believe to be believers in Christ, that, that really are struggling right now what to do with this. And as parents, we struggle with it because, you know, we, we don't know how our kids are leaning. I, I know this real beautiful girl out at the ranch, and, and she's, you know, I hadn't seen her lately, and I found out she's, she's got dabbling with some things. I'm thinking, you know, and she doesn't have a father in her life. And, and so now that I know this today, uh, over the next week or so, I'll be reaching to try to connect with her and do my best to, to see, uh, let me just say it like this. Bruce Jenner is a sympathy-grabbing, for-profit, false prophet to this generation, controlled by his lust to be a homosexual, justifying his sin by telling the world through Hollywood that God made a mistake by making him a man. Did that make good sense right there, what I just said? I'm going to say it again. If you don't know who Bruce is, he was on a Wheaties box. There's a push now to get him back on the Wheaties box as a woman. The push now is to get him back on the box as a woman. My problem is, and I saw the interview too, is that simply said, this is, a, this, it was a couple of years ago, a pastor friend of mine, Don Metcalf, in California. I was talking to him on the phone. Don just called me to check on us with the flood. Pastor's in uh, uh, Downey, uh, which is outside Los Angeles. And he said, our, our county... Los Angeles County just passed a law saying that if a man thinks he's a woman, he can go into a woman's restroom. I laughed at him on the phone. I laughed at him. I said, bro, are you kidding me? He said, this is known as transgender, Pastor Jerry. I, I, I knew it as another name. So uh, he, he's bringing this up to me, and I'm going, D you, you, are you? I, and I, so I told my 15-year-old son, Judah, I know Judah. I said, Judah, you heard the latest law? If you think you're a girl, you can go into the, boys, the girl's bathroom. He said, Dad, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so 
See, this is how rednecks think. Hello. This is the people to me that have the most sense in the world. This, this whole thing, whenever you, you start deviating, you start um, pushing away from the word of God, you start, and we give in, and in, in the bottom line it's simply this, we're giving in to our own lust, and we're giving to, uh, in to other people. I, I promise you, man, if I catch some man walking in the girl's bathroom in this church, somebody's going to get a butt whooping. You know, and I don't care if he's wearing a dress, and he's one of your kids. I, it don't matter. I, it just ain't happening. Don't go in there with our girls. Right. Amen. Now, if you're a girl going out with our boys, you're on your own. <laughs> Again, it's how we think. Come on. Amen. Because I just look at this thing so much different. Uh, we, we talked a little bit last, year, uh, last week about this, the, the tax for profit marijuana. How many know we're, think, we're changing our thinking? Did you know just yesterday Texas allowed a law to come in that if you have liquid marijuana, you can give it to your children? But then the, the, the dude said, but we're never going to have legalized marijuana. Okay, but you're still saying something, that the use of marijuana can help medically. And so I messed la last week. I think I said I'd rather you smoke dope than drink beer. I didn't say go smoke dope. <laughs> help me. I didn't say go smoke dope. I said I'd rather you smoke dope than drink beer because I've seen more damage with liquor than I ever have with weed smoking, ever. I've seen more people get hurt. I've seen uh, the, 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 constable, the, the head constable in Montgomery County, Rowdy Hayden, his son was just hitting the head on, well, head on uh, this weekend by a drunk driver. His son. You know, uh, the, the cop that stands out there at the end of uh, uh, Baptist and Camden Road flagging the traffic out at the end of the service, uh, Wayne Morrow, his daughter was killed by a drunk driver. I've seen more happen with drinking. And it's a hard addiction to break. I'm not slamming you. I'm just telling you, be careful with this. I'd rather that happen. I said that in Ucaney last week, and it was like you could hear a pin drop. Jay and I were talking about it. Y'all all laughed, but out there they went, oh. and, like, and I'm making sure I, I wasn't giving nobody permission. <laughs> Amen. How many know that's a little bit more country out there? Hello. <laughs> Amen. A little more out in the woods, so I had to be careful what I say. But, I, but again, our attitudes are changing. Uh, how about the attitude of entitlement that we're seeing today among our, 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 our people that's coming up? The feeling that you are deserving without working for it. It's a terrible thing. You come up and you raise a society that doesn't work, and then and they got, uh, they're drawing money off the government, which, by the way, we are the government. It's our money. It ain't their money. It's our money. We voted them in so they could give money to everybody. So there's an entitlement attitude that's coming out. Now, listen, you are entitled if you put in. But if you didn't put in, quit acting like you're all entitled. Amen. You, 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 you can find something to do. So realize the impact of change thinking. We've got to change our thinking. And I may not can do everything out there, but I can do everything I can in the little country church and online and where I can to help people change the way they think. Amen. You can't stop people from thinking, but you can start them. I may not can stop you, but I can start you. Amen. And get you starting to think a little bit different. Automatically, when I started talking about being a believer to being a disciple to being a Christian, you started thinking different. Amen. You start realizing you hadn't attained yet, but you are attaining. You're moving there. Change thinking is not automatic. It's not just something happened when you got born again. Jesus continually challenged the thinking of the common people and the religious. He made both groups glad and mad. Last week I taught you that Jesus is not a, a fair God. Amen. God's not fair. He never was fair. Uh, he said he gave, he gave one guy a, a dollar for, for uh, nine hours work, another guy a dollar for six hours, another guy for three hours, another guy a dollar for one hour work. The guy who worked nine hours was mad at the one we got the dollar. Hold on. Ah, okay. All right. That would have hurt you if that had come through. Okay. So, so Daenerys, he said Daenerys. We called it a dollar last week. But either way, the issue was he's not fair. So he changed the way they're thinking. And one guy got mad. The issue was, what did you agree to? What did you agree to pay? And if you agreed to that amount, then that's what you agreed to. So don't, don't say anything about it. Thank God you at least had a job for a time. So again, he changed the way. He made people mad. He, he upset them. You know, they just, they just wanted to kill him. That's all. Change thinking is also difficult. If someone wants to give you a thought off the top of their head, it's usually dangerous. So be careful with those who want to share with you. Thinking is hard work. That's why so few do it. It's hard to think. 
I mean, you know, I mean, you've heard me talk about men and women. Women have a head full of wire. They never quit thinking. They're always thinking. She's thinking right now. She's taking notes, trying to concentrate on me, but she's thinking about the laundry at home. She's thinking about the grandkids. She's thinking about her sick daughter-in-law who got my jacket Sunday and some way started throwing up again, thinking somehow it transferred from my jacket to her. <laughs> she's thinking all these things. Her brain ain't stopped since she's been in church. This man right here, I know him. He's got a head full of boxes. He, he, he's got a box for her. He's got a box for you. He's got a box for me. He used to have a box for his golf clubs. He, he had a he had box for, for everything. got a box for his mother-in-law in his basement, and he just stays from box to box to box. The boxes really never touch. His favorite box is his nothing box. He can think of nothing for hours. That's what men can do. Men are good at that. We can think about nothing. Y'all can't believe that, but it's true. Is that right? Amen. So it's, this is important. But, but when we have to start to think, we've got to force ourselves into thinking and, and press ourselves into it. It's hard work. I think it's harder work for men than it is for women because women are always thinking. It, sometimes you look at a man and go, what are you thinking? You know, just, and you swear he's lying. <laughs> Don't you women? You know he's lying because you're not able to do that. You can't even shut down at night. Your brain's still running. You can't get to sleep. And he's over there. <laughs> and you hate him, man. You want to hit him. How's he sleeping? The day we just had with the kids and the dogs and this and the skunk and the snakes and he's sleeping. <laughs> Ain't hard for us. Don't be mad at us. Don't be hating. Don't be hating because God made us who we are. We wish sometimes we could think more like you. God help us. We wish we could think more like you. <laughs> we still try. I buy books written by women to try to figure out why women think the way they do, and I still can't figure it out. <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to get in trouble here. Change thinking, though, it's worth the investment. When you start thinking, it's worth the investment. You can mine more God from thoughts than the earth. If you just get in this book, if you'll just take, even through the summer, if you start reading the book of Proverbs, and you'll take a proverb a day. If it's, if it's the first day, read Proverbs 1, then Proverbs 2, and just take it and start mulling over it. And take, I'm going to tell you, you'll start mining truth, and you'll start getting uh, uh, principles and, and statues that are start working in your life, beginning to change it. Gold mines tap out, stock markets crash, real estate markets go sour. But the human mind with the ability to think well, it's like a diamond mine that never runs out. It's priceless. It's a better way of doing something. It starts with thinking. Change thinking is also the best gift you can give to others to help people start thinking. The potential and the thoughts for a new song, starting a church, business, camps, job opportunities, entrepreneurs. When you change your mindset, you may change an enemy into a friend. Uh, I remember when God confronted me with the issue of racism. I wasn't born a racist, but, but I had people to help teach me to be a racist. When you're in North Alabama, there's black, white, and there was a time the Ku Klux Klan had their uh, headquarters there. And I remember having a friend who was a chaplain in the Ku Klux Klan. And we just, you know, when I came up, we, we only had three types of folk in our, in our area, black, white, and Jose, and he was from Puerto Rico. <laughs> I'd never met Hispanics until I came here. I'd never been around tortillas, enchiladas, guacamole, <laughs> jalapenos. <laughs> I'd never been around any of that stuff until I came down here. I told you, first time I got here, I was, I was working in San Antonio as uh, at the uh, uh, International Bible College, going to college there where John went to school also after that. But I, I was working for uh, uh, R.C. Cola, and I was loading trucks because I worked for R.C. Cola in Sheffield, Alabama. And I was, you know, I, I took a transfer here, and I went to Bible college. And, you know, it was a kind of a crazy story to get there. But when I was working, I, w I would work from 2 o'clock in the morning to 8 o'clock in the morning. I would load trucks all night. And, uh, you know, going to college. And, and I remember I watched a guy clock out. He had a ponytail. He never wore a shirt, tattoos all over him. Real strong guy. And I thought, that's the leader of this whole group. And if I can connect with him, I'm just a young boy. I mean, young man, 21, 22 years old. I said, if I can connect with that man right there, I I'll get in with this group and I can, I can win somebody to Jesus. I was just, you know, I'm, that song, Crazy. Yeah, that's my life, you know, being crazy about Jesus. So I'm, the, so I'm watching him clock out and he clocks out. And I go read his name and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I got, I got, you know, if you call a man by his name, Garza, then you, you, you connect with him pretty quick so I appreciate you saying that tonight so I watched him when he clocked out and I, and I yelled his name from across the RC Cola plant hey Martin ass <laughs> he rode off of the forklift holding his belly saying Martinez gringo Martinez <laughs> we instantly became friends though I remember being over at his house. You remember when Backward Masking was out? I had a cassette of Backward Masking. And they were, this, is li this literally happened. I'm on break time. You know, you work a couple hours, you get break time. When his little house was right next to the RC plant, which was near Pearl Beer. 
the big thing downtown, San Antonio. So here I am down there with him in his little wooden house, and all the guys came over to his house. I thought, man, I'll go to his house too. I went to his house. Oh, man. They had bongs. <laughs> no wonder these guys worked a night shift, man. They, a bong is something you smoke dope out of, Sister Dolly. I see Sister Dolly going, a bong? What's a bong? You know, it's, I, I'm sorry, I apologize. It's, it's just this thing that you can smoke drugs through. Mike, help teach your mama, please. <laughs> Educator. Uh, anyway, so they, they smoking dope in there, and I walk in with this backward masking cassette. This actually happened. And you put it on, and you play this song by uh, uh, the Beatles, and, it, and we play it backwards. It says, turn me on, dead man, turn me on, dead man. You remember any of that nonsense, Stairway to Heaven and all that? And you play it backwards, and the devil starts talking through the music. But we were all into that stuff because we were trying to show the devil everywhere. So I'm letting them do that, and they're high as kite. <laughs> That's good stuff, Ringo. <laughs> I mean, it was just uh, a part. And I'm sitting there not smoking, not drinking amongst all the smoke. Holding my breath. In Jesus' name. These guys became my friends. I can't remember ever working a job I didn't win somebody to Jesus. Always had that opportunity. Because I always think I can. I always think I can connect with them somehow, some way. Amen. Even if God has to make a way through it. So the impact of change thinking. Well, why am I this way? Why are you that way? Why are you the way you are? You, many times we want to blame others. We want to blame circumstances. Just can't seem to, to explain why. Just hope things will turn around. They, you know, we desire things to change, but they don't do. Uh, if you don't do anything differently, they're never going to change. So you've got to recognize that only when you make the right changes to your thinking do other things begin to turn out right in your life. One person cannot change another person. Uh, you know, I, I, wish, I wish we could. You can't do it. You can't change me. I can't change you. I can pray for you. You can pray for me. We can influence one another, but, but we can't change one another. Only you can decide that. Only you can decide how much you're going to change and what you're going to do with your change. And you've got to recognize that. Recognize that the, the only one that can make the right changes in life are you. As a pastor, I'm responsible to people, not for them. To you, not for you. You're going to have to get to heaven on your own. You've got to decide what you think, what you believe, when you get a haircut, who you're going to marry. You know, people used to get on, they got to get on, why don't you give marriage counsel? Why don't you uh, do this? Why don't you do that? You know, if you ask me, I'll do the best I can with you. But as a rule, most folks that have made up their mind to do something, they're going to do it anyway. Amen. And usually I'm around to have to patch things up and do the best I can with them. Uh, but I've changed the way I've thought about a lot of things. And I, and I don't mean this mean. I've had others that, that have come to me lately, and they realize I'm not baptizing no more. Some of y'all notice that? If you've been out in the water, I haven't been baptizing. I send uh, other people in to do the donking. I do the talking. Because it's right after church. But then I'm, I'm not haunted. I'm directed by Scripture. And I remember reading this when I was in college. And, and I remember how it affected me because I'm not somebody that's trying to get you in the water. Joseph, Joseph come out of a church of Christ. If you were ever involved in church of Christ, you know that, to, that in order to be in the church of Christ, you've got to get baptized. As a matter of fact, you're not even going to heaven according to them unless you're baptized. If you go to the United Pentecostal Church, you're not going to heaven unless you're baptized, come out of the water talking in tongues. I'm glad God made it a whole lot easier than that. Amen. Amen. If, baptize, if baptism saved you, then the thief on the cross went to hell in Jesus' life. Amen. Baptism doesn't save us. But baptism does tell the whole world that the old is gone and the new has come. Amen. And, and Jesus had it done, and the Father recognized him through that. But Paul said this, and this is what blew me away, because I've used this scripture before, and people try to tell me that you've got to be baptized. Paul said this, My brother, some from Chloe's household have informed me that there are quarrels among you. Now, God help us if we ever have a quarrel in our churches. That's a joke. If you've got at least two people, you're going to have a quarrel. Amen. It's hard to pastor a church if you're by yourself. You need somebody to join you. And if you get too folk, you're probably going to get a quarrel eventually. So Paul heard there was a quarrel going on there at the house. He said, what, is, what I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another says, I follow Paulus. Another, I follow Cephas. Cephas was Peter. And another still says, I follow Christ. And then he says, is Christ divided? And the answer to that is no. He means not divided. Was Paul crucified for you? Again, the answer is no. Were you baptized into the name of Paul? No. I am thankful that I did not baptize any of you except Crispus and Gaius. Now, this is what hits me. If baptism saved you, then Paul's saying, I'm glad I didn't win any of y'all to Jesus. Is that right? Is that what he said? He said, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of y'all. Oh, 
then he remembers. Crispus and Gaius. And then he goes on. So no one can say that you were baptized into my name. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's like he, he's remembering. Yes, I baptized the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I don't remember if I baptized any, anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the words of human wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied by its power. My, my thinking began to change on all of this with baptism, and, I, and I'm for baptism. I, I want people to get baptized. I want you to get baptized. You've not been baptized. I thank God for those I have baptized. But the bottom line is, it's just as, it's, if you will understand that I'm to be your pastor, your preacher, I want to preach the Word of God to you. I want to teach the Word of God. I don't want people to feel like they're connected to me simply because of a baptism. Everybody follow that? Amen. I want you to feel connected because I preach and I teach to you on Sundays and Tuesday nights. I want you to feel that way because we're connected in other areas of our life. And I also want to teach David and Joseph that it's not about connecting yourself to a man. You know, I know a lot of preachers, man, they, they want to be the one to baptize you. They want to be the one to be there or this, that, and the other. I get to, and I thank God for that. I thank God for that. But if I don't get to, don't get, up, don't get mad at me. Amen. Don't get upset with me because I can begin to change the way I think about all this. Uh, you know, I thank God, Scooter, 28 years ago, we were connected. I baptized you. You know, uh, so I, I look back in life and I thank God. But on the flip side, I've baptized now 50 folks standing on the side of the pool doing the talking and letting them get down in the water with them. Amen. And hold them under. Long time. <laughs> they're rookies. They're learning. So, again, therefore, I, you know, when I speak and somebody else gets dunked, I, I don't want you mad at me. I just want to be your pastor. I want to teach you God's word and not divide the body of Christ. And that's what Paul's saying here. Let's not divide the body over baptism. Let's not divide it over who's following who. Some say they're Paul. Some say they're Apollos. Listen, Paul later said, uh, one of us waters, one of us puts seed down, the other waters, but God always brings the increase. Yeah. Amen. God always gets the glory for it. So the process to a changed life through thinking. Changing your thinking changes your belief. People will never attain what they cannot see themselves do, and people become victimized because they have not been taught how to think, nor do they pursue a lifelong desire of growth of the mind. One of the things I pray in public schools, we'll start teaching kids how to think. It ain't, it ain't just two plus two is four. How'd you get there? Amen. Learning, learning to think. Learn to think. Learn to think, you, you know, mechanically, learn to think. Uh, we would learn to think. Learn how to, to work with things. I, you know, one of the things I, I, I look back on life, I wish I'd have hounded my dad a little more because my dad was a smart man, but he had to make himself smart. He had to make himself think. Dropped out of school in the ninth grade in order to work to help support his mom. Uh, you know, I watched my dad labor through life, but then there were times he'd just yell at me to get a tool and wouldn't tell me what the tool was for or how to use it or things like that. And all I remember is wear shoes when you're pushing a lawnmower. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> yeah, because then, then when it cuts your, your converse, it doesn't cut your toes as bad. Okay, so I don't want you victimized. Without a strong thought life, we can fall prey and become dependent to the opinion of others. This is why many fall under the power of religious systems. You don't want to do that. Again, the human mind can change. It's personal. It's possible. It's profitable. Why are some people successful and others are not? Yeah, you know, people have excuses all the time about, about life. Why, you know, pastor, here's the excuses they throw up. Uh, there they are. No, you're good. There it is. Successful people get better opportunities. Well, how did they get successful to start with? People who don't succeed have bad backgrounds. Look, you don't want to check our family trees. <laughs> Education makes all the difference. I've known a lot of stupid, smart people. Uh, failure results from bad breaks. Everybody has bad breaks. Everybody's going to have bad breaks. Some people are smart, others are not. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Which type of thing is going to help you succeed? Smaller, big picture thinking? You know the answer. Amen. Scattered or focused? Restrictive or creative? Fantasy or realistic thinking? You ever get around somebody that's, that thinks that their world is fantasy world? I mean, you want the gospel. It's just fantasy world. And it's not, not, real, not realistic. You know, when you get married, you get children, you got, you, you got a mortgage, and you got a car payment, and things like that, you better start getting realistic about life. Amen. I, I've met people who said, God told me he was going to take care of me and my family. I'm going to trust in the Bible. He says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging bad bread. So I'm just going to sit right here and let folk take care of me. 
That's terrible thinking. That's a fantasy world. You need a whooping. Amen. So it gets the sense knocked back into you, man. But people get this way. They get that way about romance and other things in life. Listen, my wife didn't even get near me Saturday. Forget the romance. <laughs> She's throwing things at me. You know, she, help, no, I ain't helping you. You just stay over there and throw up. <laughs> people think, you know, that, that they see this fantasy world about marriage. Marriage ain't always that way. Sometimes, you know, the hair gets rubbed off. The buttons pop. H. Uh, random or strategic thinking. Be strategic. Limited or possibility. Impulsive or reflective. Popular or innovative. Solo or shared. Anybody can think what everybody else is thinking, but do you think outside the box? And by the way, shared thinking. Two are better than one. Scripture says you get three together, it's a cord that can't be broke. It's amazing what happens when you get two or three together. By the way, if you at least have three, you've got somebody watching your blind spot. And that's important. Everybody has blind spots. Don't think you do. You're not an island to yourself. You need somebody to help you think and see life. Amen. Uh, selfish or unselfish thinking. And wishful or bottom line thinking. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful to pay everything off by the end of October. That's my goal. That's my prayer. I'm hopeful there. But, but I can't just sit back and say, well, let's see what happens. I got to keep pressing, got to keep believing, got to keep asking folk to give. Gotta, we got to have a great camp season. You know, I'm depending on a lot of things to take place. But boy, when we get things paid off, oh, happy day. Amen. You know how long it's been for this preacher since I've had everything paid off? About every time I get something built, we end up building something else. And people keep on coming. I try to do my best to stop them, and they keep coming. <laughs> I say the, the darndest things <laughs> to get people to quit coming to church. And what do they do? They just invite somebody else. And they keep coming in. Now, I don't mean that, guys, and you know it. I thank God for the people that come in this house. But if God keeps sending them, we've got to keep building. Yeah. We've got to keep expanding. We've got to do what he wants us to do here on earth until he comes again. Amen? Everything begins with a thought. We're going to start closing with this. You know, great thinkers, and I, I study great thinkers. I listen to them. I watched John Wayne movie the other day, and I realized what a great actor he was. He had a way with, with people. And, and um, there was a scene in that movie and I looked at Sister Lori, and I said, boy, you couldn't get away with that today. Have you seen the movie The Cowboys? And that little stuttering boy? And he starts telling if he ever stutters again, and he starts chewing him out for stuttering, and the little boy starts calling him a, a name, and he quit stuttering, and he kept saying it, and he kept saying it. And I thought, that was smart. Yeah, he was just, he just, so, and, and I'm watching the movie, and I know some of it is, is scripted and things, but John Wayne was just, he was a cut above. As an actor goes, he had a way of, of drawing you in, helping you enjoy the show. I, I watched the whole show. It was great. Everything begins with a thought. You began with a thought. Oh, you all dirty-minded. In the beginning, God, God thought of you first before you were a twinkle in your daddy's eye or a bump in your mama's belly, okay? God thought of you first. You were on his mind. You know, David even brought that up. We were in the, in the heart, in the mind of God, and God said, I've got to figure out a way to get them to earth. Amen. And then you were a thought to someone else. But everything begins with a thought. Everything created, every, every piece of furniture, every uh, electronic, everything begins with a thought. You've got to think about it. you got to think. Matter of fact, I believe there would never be a day that, that I would ever preach of a path. And I, I fought this. I fought this, man. I fought. And I still got my Bible here. You know why? Because my Bible, I'm like Linus with his, with, his, with his blanket. This is my security. Amen. I know where stuff is in here. Sometimes this thing shuts down. <laughs> Amen. I am not exactly. But, but it's amazing. I don't have papers laying all over the place. I don't, and I got, I got all my files kept. And, but I was one of these anti-computer guys. And you can go into my office and you'll still see yellow paper there. Because I always preached off yellow paper, and I wrote with three-colored ink. I had, a, I had black for, for the bold and, and blue for pra practical points and red for scripture. And I always wrote with three ink pens. And you'll, you'll find some of my old sermons. Someday when I'm dead, you'll go back and say, well, that's one of his old sermons. And now when you look on here, you, you'll find that, that when I do a sermon on here, there's black and there's red and there's blue. Because <laughs> they got that on laptops now, too. So I'm finding all kind of cool stuff, you know, that I'm learning. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not as afraid of it as I once was. So it, it's okay to change your thinking. Come on, give me an amen. amen. It's okay to change your thinking. But don't depend on it all the time. 
Amen. I think a good paper Bible is a great thing to have. Can you imagine when they started using this back in the day when they had parchment? Come on. And some dude said, you using one of them 1611 Bibles? Huh? One of them, we'll come right off the Gutenberg press? Well, man, that ain't God's will. This is. <laughs> he pulls out that big scroll and that parchment and lets it go like a note. You remember the old shades? <laughs> you let it go and it flops up. You know, that, that preacher comes to, to buy the church and he's got that parchment under his arm like this right here. Come on, man. You th you'll be thinking like that, you liberal. <laughs> ain't nobody going to fall for them books. Ain't nobody going to use a book. This is God's will. <laughs> Hold that. Just scroll over here to find Isaiah 61. <laughs> that was me. About how I'm going to kick with this. I'm not going to that. Other, people, other preachers are doing that. Fancy preachers are doing that. I'm, I'm going to stick with this. I'm old-fashioned. I had to change my thinking. Come on. I had to change my thinking. And the only problem is when I do white out on this, uh, when I put that, that white stuff on there to make change my changes, it, it disappears. That was a blind joke. Is it called white out? Huh? Yeah, it's that white stuff you used to use on the... Okay, never mind. Let's quit. Let me close. Everything begins with a thought. Everything. God said, and then God made. You don't say anything unless you first thought about it. And some of you will say, well, you I wasn't thinking when I said it. You're lying. You were thinking. It was in there. Nothing comes out of here unless it's first thought. That's why you got the ability to think before you speak. Amen. Don't, don't fall for that. I, I didn't, wasn't th yes, you were thinking. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. So life didn't begin with evolution, but with a thought. Now listen to me. A thought. There, were, there had never been a day and a night. Me and you don't know what that's like. That's why when you hear people say, you know, uh, heaven, heaven's not going to be a place of day and night. We, we can't comprehend that, can we? You can't get that in your head. You can't comprehend not breathing. <sighs> Oxygen is an earth thing. Oxygen is not a heaven thing. So when you get to heaven and you say, Hallelujah! proving my point yeah. it will be the longest hallelujah ever yeah. that's why when the angels you see them saying holy holy we think they said holy holy they could be going holy and hold it there for you can't say years because there's no years in heaven you can't say days because there's no days in heaven you, you're catching this you got to change the way you think amen so when we get to heaven you know, our speech even has a lot to do with our breath. So I don't know how God's going to do what he's going to do. It's going to be telepathic. I'm going to be able to look at you and give you a, what I'm thinking. You're going to zip back what you're thinking. <laughs> Lord, if they're able to do that, that's why there won't be no male, no female in heaven. Can you imagine if the women had that ability? <laughs> We'd be getting hit from every direction. <laughs> See, that's another thing. I, and I, you know, I got some Mormon friends. They, they think when they get to heaven, they're going to be married. To whoever they're married to here on earth. And they're going to have babies, and they're going to gather celestial kingdoms. And I think that's not scripture. It's not scripture. Now, let me say this to you. As wonderful as this is, God has a better idea for us. Whatever this is, God has a better idea. So I trust him with whatever it is got a better idea what we think determines who we are and who we are determines what we do the actions of men are the best interpreters of their thoughts 
If you want to know how somebody thinks, watch how they act. Our thoughts determine our destiny. Our destiny determines our legacy. You've heard me say this a lot, guys. You are today where your thoughts have brought you. You'll be tomorrow where your thoughts take you. That's what thoughts do. People who go to the top think differently than others. Nothing limits achievement like small thinking. Nothing expands possibilities like unleashed thinking. We can change the way we think. Paul said in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think, 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 think about such things. I had a thought. Nothing runs like a deer unless it's a hungry lion. That's supposed to be funny. You can stand. You see how music affected that? <laughs> think on these things. Whatever's pure, noble, worthy, think on them. Think on them. I want you to think this week, church. I want you to think. I want you to pray for our teenagers this week. My, 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 what a, you know, I'm, my, my kids, you know, I got two more at the house. One is a senior, one just made sophomore. Thank you, Jesus. But I got two grandkids coming up. You know, see, in life, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have the children, then you get the grandkids, and you get others coming. And you're still thinking about this generation. I don't think it's too late. I think we can turn it around. I believe there will be believers. We, we won't win the whole world. God loves the whole world, but we won't win the whole world. But we can win our world. As a matter of fact, can I tell you, I'm only responsible for my world. I'm responsible for the sphere of influence that I have. And so I want to keep influence as much as I can toward what is right. And if you do that, you imagine we'll be full again this Sunday. Amen. God will keep doing what he does. And, and listen, it's to him be the glory. Guys, you know I've, I've had full churches. I've, I've always pastored full churches. I've seen big churches grow. But I'm going to tell you, I would rather pastor 700 lions than 70,000 sheep. I'd rather have people that are thinkers, that think outside the box, that, that understand that God is for them, that greater is he that's in them than he that's in the world, that Satan is under their feet. Amen. That you are humbly positioned right below God, right above angels. You are a revelation receiver. You're blessed to be a blessing. Man, when you get people thinking right, whew, it's, it's just good church then. It's just good church then. Father, I thank you for this house. I pray that people got what they came for here tonight. I pray we leave here thinking different and believing different. I give you praise for, for my friend John here tonight and, and those who came back from this Sunday. God, I thank you for your mercies on our life, God, and how you're instructing and guiding us. Lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go get your children. They're yours. They were your thoughts. <laughs>